Okay, our problem number three, and again, I have to move to the whiteboard because there's really not enough room to put this down. However, I do want to claim for those students looking at the answer key, if you're able to get these on your own, please do so. All right, before I move on to the whiteboard, though, I want to point out, if you think there's something wrong with the document, please reach out to me. All right, my name is Ron Bannon. My email address is Bannon. That's B as in boy, the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, Go to the whiteboard and do problem number three. I'm going to write it down. And same thing. They, they tell me it's second order, so let's write this down. And problem number three is 1 plus 5x. Now, I'm not saying you're going to get faster at this, but at least I know the steps after doing the first two problems. And that's my encouragement to you. You're going to learn steps by doing problems. Are you gonna make mistakes? Of course you're gonna make mistakes. Again, if you look at the footnote, they say it's second order. So what I'm gonna do, well, if it's second order, I just do this, AX times S and BX squared times S. And what do you get there? You would get AX plus 5ax squared plus 21ax cubed plus 85ax4, yada, yada, yada. All right, let's do the bx squared now. And what do you get there? You're going to get plus bx squared plus 5bx cubed plus 21 bx4 plus yada, yada, yada. Kind of add them together. As I do that, I'm getting a little better at this. It's going to be s, and then you're going to get what? 1 plus ax plus bx squared, and that's going to be equal to 1 plus 5x plus AX. Here's the deal, though. I want this to disappear, this to disappear, and that to disappear. All right, so let's write this down. All right, if that's going to disappear, I got to write something down here. So what am I going to write down? The coefficients on the square term now. Let's write this down. So 21 plus 5A plus B has got to sum to zero. I want that to disappear. I also want the next column to disappear, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Well, Let's put this down, 85 plus 21A plus 5B. Also has to be zero. Well, I'm gonna multiply the top equation by minus five. And what would you get there? You would get minus 105 minus 25A minus 5B equals zero. The second equation, you get 85 plus 21A plus 5B equals zero. I'm gonna add these two together, and you're gonna get what? You're gonna get minus 20 minus 4A equals zero. Well, it doesn't look too bad, right? So what's A? A would have to be minus five for that to be true. All right, what am I going to do now? i got to get the B. So I'm going to use this equation here to try to get the B. So you get 21 minus 25, because A is minus 5, plus B equals 0. So what do you get there? You would get minus 4 plus B equals 0. So B has to be 4. This is important, and I'm going to take this now and write it down. So what do you get? S is going to be equal. I'm going to do the right side. And again, A is minus 5. So if A is minus 5, what do you get? 1 plus 5x minus 5x. You just get 1. That's nice. Let's go to the bottom. What do you get in the bottom? 1 minus 5x. Again, I believe A is minus 5 and then plus 4x squared. 
All right, what am I gonna do now? Partial fraction decomposition, if I can. Let's put this down as A. By the way, the A's are not the same now. I'm just using a different letter now, all right? Some people might say A prime, but it's just too confusing to me put, you know. We're done with those A's over there, though, and the B's. And what do you get over here? The factorization, I'm getting a little better at this. I'm going to say 1 minus 4x plus b, 1 minus x. All right? And now i got to figure out the a and the b now. All right? They're not the same a and b, by the way. Let's take a look. Clear the fraction. And you would get 1 equals a... 1 minus x plus b, 1 minus 4x. I pick an easy x. I'll pick x to be 1. You would get 1 equals, let's see, what would you get there? I did, I chose x to be 1, right? So you're going to get 1 equals, let's see, that would be no a's now because 1 minus 1 is 0, so the a disappears. And then you get minus... 3b, which means b is minus one-third. All right. I get pick another one, don't I? So I'm going to pick x to be 0. You know what? Let's pick x to be a quarter. You're going to get 1 equals a. And 1 minus a quarter is 3 quarters. Now, someone says, why'd you pick a quarter? So the b disappears. So now the a is going to be 4 thirds. All right, so I'm going to write this down now. S is equal to, well, what's the a? The a is 4 thirds. So I'll write this as 4 thirds times 1, 1 minus 4x. And the B is minus one-third, right? So minus one-third, and you're left off with one over one minus X. All right? So let's keep moving. And I got to write down, you know, the pattern that I'm seeing. And this is always difficult, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to factor out a one-third... And there's a reason to that. And what are you going to get here? You're going to get 4, 1 minus 4x, minus 1 over 1 minus x. All right? No, you don't have to do that. I just need to do that to make it a little bit easier to write the terms down now. So what's going to be equal to? It's 1 third. And I got troubles here. I'll point out what I got here. I got 4. And then I'm, I'm expanding this guy over here. That's going to be 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared plus 4x cubed plus yada, yada, yada. And then it's going to be minus, let's write this down, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, plus yada, yada, yada. All right? All right, I got I to gotta go for the pattern now. So the pattern's going to be one-third. And I got to do, like, what I call pairwise matchings. So let's put this down. It's going to be 4 minus 1, no x's. Let's do the next one plus, let's see, 4 squared, minus 1, x to the 1. Let's put the next one down. And again, I'm trying to find a pattern here. 4 cubed, minus 1, x squared. Let me just go one more, 4, 4, minus 1, x cubed. 
And I think I can go on forever here. But yeah, I don't want to go on forever. I want to stop at some point. I want to get the pattern. And let's write this down. One third, the sum. I'm going to start at zero. I know Wells does not start at zero, but I'll talk about that later. And let's just take a look. And I'm seeing something here. I'll write this down for you. I'm going to say 4 to the j plus 1. I'm seeing that. Minus 1, x to the j. This goes off to infinity. All right, so I can write the a n down now. That would be one third four j plus one minus one x to the j, and that's where I start. J starts at zero, yada yada yada. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not using j now. I'm using n. But you know Wells, he wants to start at 1. I have to erase something again. I just got J in my brain. Well, let's write this down. 1 third, 4 to the n, minus 1, x to the n minus 1. And this starts at 1 now. I'm going to box in this. We'll look at the key later, but I want to get that interval down. And the interval, this guy here is going to be the most restrictive one. So it's going to be the absolute value of 4x is less than 1. This guy over here is the absolute value of x is less than 1. This is the more restrictive one. So what does that mean? Well, it means x is between minus 1 quarter and 1 quarter. Put a circle on that. Let me get my red pen out. And let's see how we did. I got to open up my computer again. And I want to see if I got the results. Did I get a n? One third. I got this part. I got this part. That's done. Did I get this one? Yes. Now, of course, they write it down a little differently. They write it down like this over here. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. They write it down. Same thing. Same exact thing. All right, we're good to go. Thank you for paying attention.